Hello everyone, welcome into my craft space. Today I am having some fun with some Stamperia decoupage rice paper and I am absolutely loving it. This collection is the Atelier des Arts collection. My French is terrible, so please excuse me. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is uh, what I like to do with the edges of the paper. They come clean cut, so you can just use scissors and cut them apart, but what I really like to do is use a little water and tear them apart because then you get all of this fibery goodness on the edges. So let's go ahead and do that. You can just simply squirt at your page with water or you can use a water brush or you can use just simply a paintbrush and some water, which I've got here. And we're just gonna go ahead and go along the edge. Now, I just really like to get just the basic edge there because you can see they've got this beautiful pattern all the way up to the edge of the paper. So then I just simply take my fingernail and I kind of do two fingers here, two thumbs, whatever you want to use, and just pull the fiber apart. So you're pulling this one, I'm right-handed, so you're pulling this one away from this one. And just doing it gently because sometimes there will be larger fibers in the paper available there. And you can either snip those or just kind of gently pull them apart. And you will see what it does is it gives you this beautiful fibrous edge almost whoops sorry about that <laughs> almost like a mulberry paper and um, it is absolutely gorgeous sometimes i keep those little pieces that i pull off and i use them to fill in areas where i might want a little bit more of the edge if it dries out like this one has done you can just simply add in some more water and don't be afraid to play with this paper it's absolutely gorgeous and it provides such an amazing texture. I'm gonna show you um, how I have been using it in my altered book here. Okay, so you can see I've switched hands. I don't normally do much with my left hand, but today apparently I am able to pull this apart, so that is great. Okay, so these little script scraps here you can save if you need just to fill in a little edge or whatever. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on fast forward and just keep them going around both of these designs here. The, um, the whole pack uh, or the whole page actually comes with four of these and I'll show you all four of them uh, before the video is over. So here's what one looks like when I have put it into the book. I love how absolutely wonderful it looks on book page. You can see all of this beautiful book page printed interest in the background. Now I did ink the page before I put this on here, uh, but I will show you my process for putting on. It's very, very simple and I love the texture and feel it, that it gives and such a wide variety of interest to add to your book so super easily. So I like to, um, I know I have four of these, so I like to make sure I kind of skip around a little bit in my book while I'm working on it. So this one is at the very back, and this one that I just did is still kind of drying. It's a little bit tacky, but it's towards the front. So now I need to put some in the middle, and since I tended to put these ones on the right side of the pages, I'm going to put the other ones on the left, just for variance. So let's go ahead and do one here. And when I'm working on these, I like to put some clips uh, in the book pages that are nearby just to make sure nothing's going to stick where it shouldn't be sticking. So I've just got some little book clips here. You can use binder clips or bulldog clips or whatever it is that you like to do. So I'm gonna use this one. I think they're all absolutely wonderful. You can see on the back, you can't really see the pattern. So there is a definite front and a back, so you won't uh, easily get them confused. I do already have the edges of this book page inked, so that is good and ready to go. And then next, uh, I am using a palette knife and some 3D matte gel from Prima. You could also use Collage Podge or Mod Podge or any of the podges. You can use a 3D gloss gel if you want your finished product to be glossy rather than matte. And there are several different companies that sell uh, this gel medium. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open it up and you can see it doesn't pour out. It's it's literally a gel. That's why they call it gel. I guess that would make sense. So we'll just take a little bit out here and we will just pretend we are frosting a cake or something of the like. Put on a very thin layer. You don't need to put on a lot. And you want to avoid the crease of your book because uh, you don't want that to glue together. So we'll just kind of smear it over this. You can go through and mark uh, where the design is going to be if you think you need to do that. I just kind of guesstimate and put it on here. Now it is a little bit forgiving as far as like you can lift it just a little bit if you place it down. But if you really place it down like this, um, there's not much going back. <laughs> So then, um, if you didn't get enough underneath of any of the areas, you can add a little bit more and just press it down. Now, I don't iron this. I suppose you probably could if you really wanted to put wax paper, or not wax paper, parchment paper. Don't use wax paper. Parchment paper and iron it out. You could, but really, it does uh, a really good job of staying straight if you just go slow and press it all the way down. So I just go ahead and make sure I really got those edges good, press it down, and then we're going to take a little bit more of this matte gel on our palette knife and spread it over the top, just like you would if you were decoupaging. Now, I have been accused of being um, a, a massive decoupager, saying that I would decoupage anything that doesn't move fast enough, and that is probably true. I love to decoupage, but rice paper is definitely a beautiful and fun medium to decoupage with. So if you haven't tried it, definitely give it a try. Uh, I have some mulberry paper. I think I might try decoupaging with that too, just to see what it does. I bet it would be fun. So um, I do love this. I love the way, especially that it looks over book page. Whoops, I got a little too aggressive with my palette knife there, but that is okay. You can see you can just kind of smear it back in. And that is where some of those little uh, scraps might come in handy. We could put it, you know, there, or you can just touch it with a little bit of ink, or you can just enjoy that it um, is now more, a little more vintage looking, uh, rustic looking, whatever you want to call it. Okay, then I like to scrape the excess off here. You want to make sure you keep these mediums nice and tightly closed. They are uh, susceptible to temperature variance and can dry out. So Tim Holt says use them or you'll lose them. So that is totally true. Um, then I take a little bit of a damp baby uh, wipe, make sure I didn't get any glue down in here. And if you got any over the edge too much, you can wipe it if you want to, or you can just simply let it dry. I like to let it dry on its own rather than using a heat tool, but you can use a heat tool as well um, just to let it dry. And then this one I will go through and put somewhere else as soon as this one's dry. So it can be a little bit of a slow process uh, just because you have some drying time there, but I will show you some pictures as soon as this one's dry and I've got the other one drying. Now that it's dry, we'll just go ahead and add some uh, splatters. Make sure that you have your area uh, prepared for splattering because it can leave a little bit of a mess. I'm just going to go ahead and open uh, the bottle here and splash some on. And I don't care if I get some on the surrounding page here. You can use a brush, you can use a splatter brush, you can use the sprayer, all kinds of different ways to get uh, different splatters and splashes. And I've got a clip holding open two pages of the book here that each have uh, the rice paper design. So I'm just going to try and splatter at the same time. Get some good splattering going on here. And I've got a couple different colors. So this one was Distress Walnut Stain. And of course you can just spray it. Uh, 
that works as well. I want to get some good splashing going on, and I'm loving this one over here. You can already see that oxide must have hit a little bit of water, and so it's got some blue coming out of the brown, and that is just amazing, and I love that. Okay, so let's see here. The next one I'm going to use is a little bit of speckled egg. This one is uh, lighter, and it's just spray stain, so it won't have the oxidization factors going on but will give just kind of a light color and you can touch it right to the page or you can splatter it whatever works best for you and if you don't know what works best try a little bit of everything <laughs> you can put a little something over this design here if you don't want to get many splashes or splatters on there that works too All right, I didn't do much with that one because I really prefer the oxides for this here right now. I'm gonna go ahead, this one is the Faded Jeans and I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz in there and spritz over here and you can see it leaves quite a bit of color. And we'll just drip a little bit along the edges here. A little bit here and there, get some blue. And this one is Kitsch Flamingo. This book has all kinds of splattery goodness, so we can use all the colors and just have so much fun, and I love that. Oh, I did get some blue on the edge of that. I don't want to contaminate the whole thing, so we'll just clean it off down here. My scratch paper, there we go. Watch out for that. <laughs> just put a few pink splashes. And on this one, when I was putting the rice paper down, I did get a little bit of the paper went through. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. This one is Rustic Wilderness Oxide Spray, and I'm just gonna go ahead and blob it just a little bit in that area. I think it will kind of cover it nicely without being too noticeable. There we go. And we can put a couple of other little splatters down here. Now, if you open your spray and kind of splat it like I am, that's how you get the bigger blobs of splatters. And I really do kind of like that in addition to some of the spraying. So just kind of doing a little bit of everything. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and we'll check back here in just a few minutes. So in their finishing touches here, this one I did not splatter anything around yet. I don't know that I will. I might just leave this one and enjoy it. I really do love this image here. It does have a little bit of some splattering just from the rice paper itself, but I think it's really beautiful on this book page. Might add just a sentiment or something there, or just like I said, enjoy this beautiful picture. Now this one I did have fun and splattered with. I don't know what's gonna go on this page yet, so uh, some splatters in the background will be nice here. I can put a nice sentiment or something down here as well. This whole book has a bunch of fun splattery goodness, uh, just like the collection offers, so lots of fun to play in this book here. I am absolutely loving this collection. Some more fun splatters on this page. And here's how this one turned out. Some splattering, it just looks like that painting is just coming right out of the page. And I love that you can still see the book page in the background, so it adds a lot of nice uh, interest there. We could still take a, some kind of a stamp and go over it with like some scripted font or something of the like, and just get a little more interest going on in there. Let's see, the other one was closer to the front. Where did I put that one? There are four of them. There's this one, okay, a little sticking there. Still trying to dry. Again, no splatters on this one, but I think I will probably put just a few splatters around the edges. Uh, again, I do love these images and they are great just by themselves. Um, if you do get a little bit of tearing on your rice paper, just put it down with some collage medium and just kind of blend it in and it will uh, just look like it's part of that torn effect. You can also take some white gesso and just kind of lighten those edges around if you wanted to do that to kind of smooth it out and make it look like 
one cohesive piece, but really there's no need to do that if you're using the collage medium because it does a really nice job of holding it there and blending it to the page. And I just absolutely love adding these rice papers to my altered book here. If you are enjoying this video, enjoying this collection, and want to see more of how this book was made, I've been making it as part of the design team for the White Rose Crafts uh, group and there is a White Rose Crafts Gallery group on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description box below and you can catch any of the replays there. White Rose Crafts LLC also has a YouTube channel and I will link them down below as well and a lot of the videos will be put over there in playlists. So again if you'd like to see more of this collection and this book and how I've made this book definitely follow me over there. I have a lot of fun uh, tips and tutorials and we just craft live and have a great time. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you haven't yet tried any of the rice paper from Stamperia you definitely need to play with some. If you love to decoupage uh, it is such a great piece of interest to add to your projects and it just feels so nice. I love tearing it. I love working with it and um, it just adds so much to your books. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. We'll give it a, a big thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know what your favorite rice paper is or if you've used rice paper or maybe you plan to use rice paper. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching friends and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.